Hello, hello, this is Elizabeth Griffin, the Black Romance Writer, and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, if you're not following me, please take a moment and do so now. And definitely hit that notification bell so that anytime I upload a video, whether it's morning, noon, or night, you'll be the first to know. And share my content with others. If you have friends that are aspiring writers or who are people that want to get into the publishing industry, definitely share my video, share my channel, because my videos cover the gamut. We talk about self-publishing. I talk about the structure of writing, what it takes to be a writer, how difficult and challenging it could be, and also how rewarding it could be. I also cover the technical side of writing and the fun side of writing. For those of you out there who are looking for ways to support me and to encourage me in my journey as a writer, you can check out my catalog of eBooks and audiobooks. You can gift them to friends or you can read them yourselves. And I have so many different titles and I cover so many different genres in the romance industry. There is something there for everyone. I have suspense, I have medical romance, I have young adult fiction, I have quite a bit. I have erotic writing as well. So if you want to support me, that is one surefire way to do it. And if you don't want to spend money, you can request my materials at the local library. You can ask for them and they will oblige you. And I would truly appreciate that. Today, I want to continue examining the book, How to Write a Romance for the New Market and Get It Published, which was written by Catherine Falk. This particular chapter that I'm focusing on now is written by Linda Castle, and she is a romance writer, and she has written books under the Harlequin Romance brand. And this particular chapter is entitled Plotting. It's the Skeleton by Linda Castle. This particular chapter is very important to me because I have a series on Kindle Vella, which is the episodic platform for fiction and nonfiction writing on Amazon. And I have a series entitled His Dangerous Obsession. And I will be starting the second season. And I'm a little nervous about delivering on the promise that I made in the first season. So what I'm doing now is looking at research, looking at how to plot out the second season so that I can deliver a wonderful, exciting beginning of the series and a climactic a cliffhanger of an ending of season two. So I'm going back to the basics. I'm going back to my resources, which is how to write a romance for the new market and get it published, as well as how to write a romance and get it published. So I'm looking at these books because I'm looking for ways to improve my writing, to deliver on a promise, to keep my readers engaged and on the edge of their seats because they will not know what's coming next. And this particular chapter written by Linda Car Castle will help me. So Linda Castle states, it is said there are only three plots. One, man against man. Two, man against himself. And three, man against nature. And she poses a question, what are you writing? Which one of these three comes closest to describing your story? So you as a novelist will have to determine which of those three choices best describes the story that you're writing. For me, with my series, His Dangerous Obsession, of those three options, I would have to say man against man best describes my story because the main character is going to be going up against outside forces human forces that are going to attack the main character, are going to hinder the main character, are going to get in the middle of the main character and the goal that the character is trying to accomplish. You as a writer will also have to determine whether your novel is plot driven or character driven. It's extremely important that you know the difference. If your characters in a turmoil, background, circumstances, or belief system are what moves the story forward, you are most likely writing a character-driven novel. However, if outside events such as politics, weather, or natural disasters are the things that are carrying your story forward, then that would be a plot-driven story. So for me, 
I would have to say with his dangerous obsession, it is a combination of both. And I'm not trying to wiggle my way out, but you are very interested in the characters, but then there are going to be external things, as I mentioned before, that are going to be moving the story along as well. And if I can give you a little bit of a synopsis of his dangerous obsession, season two starts with a twin sister Paige and her obsession or her desire to uh, become intimate with a priest. And then there are going to be outside forces that are going to be working against that relationship. And there are going to be a lot of twists and turns and unexpected events that are going to be going on in that story. So, yes, the plot, the story will be plot driven, but it also will be character driven and strongly character driven. You will get inside the mind of my main character, Paige. You will figure out and you will see what makes her tick. What are the weaknesses that she possesses and what are the strong points that she has? I appreciate Linda Castle's advice on plotting. And I intend to apply a lot of what she said to my own storytelling and my own writing. I hadn't considered really thinking about subplots uh, in writing the second season of His Dangerous Obsession. However, because, as I said, I feel so much pressure in delivering a good story and in giving the readers what they pay their money for, I am understanding that subplotting plays a a significant role in storytelling and that there is a balance that you need to have between the main story and then the secondary story. But if you do it right, if you take your time, uh, you can deliver a quality piece of, of writing. I would also like to say at the conclusion of this video that I understand how challenging and how difficult it is to be a romance writer and to make money at it. Oh my God. It makes it seem almost impossible. But for those of you out there like myself, I just want to encourage you to stay on your journey, to continue writing, to believe in your work. One thing that I can say for sure is that with each piece of writing that I produce, with each novel that I write, I never know who the audience is. I mean, I do my research and I know the market that I'm writing towards, but I do not know which story will resonate with which reader. So I stay true to myself. I write those stories that move me, that motivate me, that inspire me. Uh, I look at what's going on around me as far as social media, the things that are trending, uh, the relationships that are trending, those type of things. And then I choose what resonates with me. And what I have found is that those stories that I thought would do wonderful, sometimes they sit there because there isn't an audience for them right now. And those other stories that I just wrote because it was in me and I didn't think they would resonate with anyone, those stories have been selling. So I find that I write whatever's in me and eventually the audience will find the work. Of course, I know you have to do marketing and things, but I can tell you this, Kendall Vella has surprised me. When I wrote Cry Another Day and published it on Kendall Vella's platform, I didn't think anyone would really read it. I wrote it because it was something in me that I wanted to get out. I've heard women talk about polygamy and being in polygamous relationships or dealing with mates that wanted to start a polyamorous relationship and the trials and the tribulations and the ups and the downs and the the fears that these women had and how some of them felt trapped. And so I wrote that story. And I'm surprised to find that quite a few people are reading it and leaving comments and they can't wait for me to begin the second season, which is why I'm studying plotting. But I found that um, I didn't think that book, that series would resonate with people, but it did. And I got some interesting comments, some true heartfelt comments. And also with uh, The Innocent Bride, I planned that story out about maybe five, six years ago. And then I didn't sit down to write it until last year. And that is my number one seller on Kindle Vela. I have over 450 thumbs ups. I have so many likes. And um, 
I'm shocked. I did not expect the story to do well. And I'm trying to find out what it is about this particular story that resonates with people. So the point of what I'm saying is that you never know which story will resonate with which reader. So stay true to yourself and write those things that are important to you and be sincere and honest and open in your writing. You know, dig deep in your emotions and try to put those emotions on paper and don't stress yourself out. Do it because you love writing and your audience will find your work. I hope this video has been helpful. I hope it has been inspiring. And I love bringing content to you like this. So as always, I'm wishing you love, peace, joy, and happiness.